Hi, boys and girls. It's Ivan time. I hope that you're um, super excited for our next few chapters of our book. I love this book and I hope you're enjoying it as well. Um, so Eric's mom um, texted me and she had um, wanted to know exactly where it took place. So I'm giving you that to you as a challenge as well. We both thought that it was right in Philadelphia off of I-95, but it is not in Philadelphia where um, this story um, had began with Ivan. So I am challenging you um, to go ahead and Google that and see if you can figure it out. Tomorrow when we start, um, I will let you know exactly where Ivan was living in his domain that was nothing like where he lived in the real world. So today I have two things for you to work on as um, we're reading. Now they're not going to just be for today. They're going to be over the next few days, but I wanted you to get like almost like a journal set up for me so that way um, we can keep track of all the things that we are reading. So um, what this is the first one up here, um, and I'll zoom in for you in just a minute um, so you can see it a little bit better and maybe then you can freeze it, um, but I can't read it like that because it's backwards. Okay, so what are the characteristics of Stella and Bob that make Ivan call them his best friends? Why is each of them important to Ivan? I'm going to zoom that in so you could pause it um, and then you could actually write it um, or you could just make like two lists for um, Bob and Stella so that you can um, put some characteristics under there about why they are so important to Ivan. And then the second thing that I want you to do is I want you to make a Venn diagram where you're going to actually be able to compare Ivan and Stella. Um, Ivan and Stella, on one side you'll put Ivan, the other side you're going to put Stella, and then remember that middle part that overlaps are the things that are the same, okay? All right, so that'll be two different things that you're going to be working on as I'm reading. Remember, you can pause me at any time to write something down so that you don't forget it. Um, and over the next few days, I'll be adding things to my Venn diagram so that you can see them as well, and then we can talk about them that way, okay? All right, so here we go with today's reading of Ivan. We're at the littlest big top on earth. My neighbors here at the Big Top Mall know many tricks. They are educated a lot, more accomplished than I am. One of my neighbors plays baseball, although she's a chicken. Another drives a fire truck, although he's a rabbit. I used to have a neighbor a sleek and thoughtful seal who could balance a ball on her nose from dawn until dusk. Her voice was like a throaty bark of a dog chained outside on a cold night. Children wished on pennies and tossed them into her plastic pool. They glowed on the bottom like flat copper stones. The seal was hungry one day, or bored perhaps, so she ate 100 pennies. That doesn't sound good. Max said she would be fine. He was mistaken. Mac calls our show the littlest big top on earth. Every day at two, four, and seven, humans fan themselves, drink sodas, applaud, babies wail, Mac dresses up like a clown, pedals on a tiny bike, a dog named Snickers rides on Stella's back, and Stella sits on a stool. It is a very sturdy stool. Why do you think it needs to be so sturdy? Think about elephants. Think about I don't do any tricks. Max says it's enough for me to just to be me. Stella told me that some circuses have moved from town to town. They have humans who dangle on ropes, twining from the tops of tents. They have grumbling lions with gleaming teeth and a snaking line of elephants clutching the limp tail in front of the other one. The elephants look far off into the distance so they won't see the humans who want to see them. Our circus doesn't migrate. We sit where we are, like an old beast, tired to push on. After our show, humans forage through the stores, a stores where humans buy things they need to survive. The Big Top Mall, some stores sell new things, like balloons and t-shirts and caps to cover the gleaming heads of humans. Hmm, what kind of people have gleaming heads? I'll give you a clue. Mr. Smith has a gleaming head. Okay, 
Some stores sell old things, things that smell dusty and damp and long forgotten. All day, I watch humans scurry from store to store. They pass their green paper, dry as old leaves and smelling of a thousand hands back and forth and back again. There's some good words here. So one of them we just said was they pass their green paper, dry as old leaves and smelling of a thousand hands. What is that exactly? What has I been seeing? He says he watches humans forage through the stores. Storage is where humans buy things they need to survive. What do you think the word forage means? Hmm. They hunt frantically, stalking, pushing, grumbling. Then they leave, clutching bags filled with things, bright things, soft things, big things, small things. But no matter again, I messed up. But no matter how full the bags, they always come back for more. Humans are clever indeed. They spin pink clouds you can eat. They build domains with flat waterfalls. What are pink clouds we can eat? Hmm, do you like those pink clouds? But they are lousy hunters. Some animals live privately, unwatched. That is not my life. My life is flashing lights and pointing fingers and uninvented videos uninvited visitors. Inches away, humans flatten their little hands against the wall of glass that separates us. The glass says you are this and we are that and that is how it will always be. Humans leave their fingerprints behind, sticky with candy, slick with sweat. Each night a wary man comes to wipe them away. Sometimes I press my nose against the glass, my nose print like your fingerprint is the first and last and only one. The man wipes the glass and then I am gone. Here in my domain, I do not have much to do. You can only throw so many me balls at humans before you get bored. A me ball is rolling up my dung until it's the size of a small apple and letting it dry. I always keep a few on hand. Boys, I can hear you giggling for sure. For some reason, my visitors never seem to carry any. In my domain, I have a tire swing, a baseball, a tiny plastic pool filled with dirty water, and even an old TV. I have a stuffed toy gorilla, too. Julia, the daughter of the weary man who clears, cleans the mall each night, gave it to me. The gorilla has empty eyes and flappy limbs, but I sleep with it every night. I call it not tag. Tag was my twin sister's name. Julia is 10 years old. She has hair like black glass and a wide half-moon smile. She and I have a lot in common. We are both great apes. We are both artists. It was Julia who gave me my first crayon, a stubby blue one, slipped through the broken spot in my glass along with a folded piece of paper. I knew what to do with it. I'd watch Julia draw. When I dragged the crayon across the paper, it left a trail in its wake like a slithering blue snake. Julia's drawings are wild with color and movement. She draws things that aren't real, clouds that smile and cars that swim. She draws until her crayons break and her paper rips. Her pictures are like pieces of a dream. I can't draw dreamy pictures. I never remember my dreams although I sometimes awaken with my fists clenched and my heart hammering. If you wake up with your fist clenched and your heart hammering, what do you think you might have been dreaming about? Think about what we already know about Ivan, about how he feels, about what he went through, and about where he lives now compared to where he should live or where he once lived. I want you to think about all of those things and start to write down some characteristics that you've already thought of as we are reading, and we'll continue to work on those together. Boys and girls, I miss you incredibly, and I know that I'm getting through to you some, some of you this way, and I am so excited to hear that. You are each and every one of you is important to me every day. And I just want you to know that I may say it over and over again. And if you can see me closely, there's tears in my eyes because I genuinely miss you. So have an amazing day. Do something active, even though it's raining out there. 
um, and let me know what you're doing and create some fun dips and solve that math problem if you would like to. And I will see you tomorrow, boys and girls.